Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with polynomial equations. We have x squared plus x equals 4, and we are supposed to evaluate x cubed minus 5x. I'll be presenting four methods. Yes, you heard it right. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to turn this into a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. And then remember, for quadratic equations like this one, we have what is called a quadratic formula. And that is given as follows. So this is the quadratic formula, in case you didn't know. And if we apply that to our equation, now notice that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 4 for our equation. So x becomes negative b, negative 1 plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times ac, which is negative 4 times 4, and that becomes a positive 16 plus 1, and that becomes square root of 17. So these are the x values. There are two x values, negative 1 minus root 17 over 2, and negative 1 plus root 17 over 2. Now, which one can I use? You can use either one. But I'm going to use the second one because it's more positive. But guess what? If you use the first one, you'll get the same thing. We're looking for a numerical value, by the way. Forgot to say that probably. So I'm going to x. I'm going to take x to be root 17 minus 1 over 2. Let's make it even more positive. Okay. Start with the positive term. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my expression because I'm trying to evaluate x cubed minus 5x for the x value that satisfies the first equation. That's an important trick. And I'll use it in other methods. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Uh, how do you cube this? You have to cube this and then subtract 5 times this, right? Okay, to cube it, I'm going to use a minus b quantity cubed, which is a cubed minus b cubed, and then minus 3ab times a minus b. That's usually an identity that I use divided by 8. And this is just going to be minus 5 root 17 minus 5. I haven't distributed negative yet, so it's still minus sign here. But it's going to be turning into a plus sign. So we can go ahead and multiply this one by 4 over 4 to make a common denominator. But let's go ahead and simplify this first. What does this give us? 17 root 17 minus 1 minus 3 times 17, which is 51. And then plus 3 root 17. And that is divided by 8, but since I already have a common denominator, I can go ahead. Actually, let's go ahead and do the following. Let's first write it this way because I haven't multiplied by 4 yet. Let me do it, and then we'll just subtract the numerators. Let's go ahead and subtract the numerators, but this plus this becomes 20 root 17. Negative 1 minus 51 is going to be negative 52. And then we're going to subtract 20 root 17. And then we're going to add because you have to negate it. Remember, double negative, divide by 8. That should be the answer. 20 root 17 cancels out. Negative 52 plus 20 is equal to negative 32 over 8. And that is equal to negative 4. Great. So that brings us to the end of the first method and the beginning of the second method. So here's the second method. Again, we are given this. And we're supposed to evaluate this expression. How do I go about that? I'm going to go ahead and isolate x squared. Write it as 4 minus x. And then from here, I'll do the following. I'll just evaluate x cubed. Multiply 4 minus x by x because x cubed is x squared times x. And this is x squared, remember? So if you distribute, you get 4x minus x squared. But again, x squared is 4 minus x. So replace x squared with 4 minus x. Keep continue doing it until you get a linear expression. And you'll get x cubed equals... 5x minus 4, because you have to distribute the negative. Now, what does that tell you? What am I looking for? x cubed minus 5x. Awesome. From here, if you subtract 5x from both sides, you get x cubed minus 5x equals negative 4. And that is the answer. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. And then we'll look at the fourth method. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a really cool graph. Of two functions. Great. Here's how, how our third method works. And before I start the third method, let me rewrite the original problem. So this is given 
and I'm trying to evaluate this one. Here's how it goes. I'm going to add one to both sides. My goal is to use the difference of two cubes formula. If I multiply this by x minus 1 and divide by x minus 1, nothing bad is going to happen because x equals 1 does not satisfy the original equation, so I'm not introducing anything extraneous. Make sense? But something nice happens in the numerator. This becomes x cubed minus 1 from difference of two cubes, a cubed minus b cubed formula. And what does this give me? This gives me what I'm looking for. Distribute, cross multiply, and then put the 5x on the left hand side and add 1 to both sides and you get what you want. There you go. So this uh, method is not always easy to see but always take advantage if you see x squared plus x or x squared minus x and if you have an x cubed always think about sum of two cubes and difference of two cubes. And by the way uh, the difference of two cubes is given by the following formula and the sum is similar to this. Just replace b with negative b. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the fourth method. And then, yes, the fourth method. I told you I was going to show you four methods, right? I don't, I don't think I've done that before. But anyways, we're still trying to keep it short. So we're given this, and we're trying to evaluate this. Here's our fourth method. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this equal to something. How about k? I don't know what it is, but it's numerical, at least I know that. So now I want this equation to work, right, if this equation works. What is that supposed to mean? It means that this cubic shares roots with the quadratic. In other words, the cubic must be divisible by the quadratic. What quadratic are you talking about? I'm talking about x squared plus x minus 4. If they have common roots, because this kind of implies this, right, but the cubic has, uh, may have extra roots, obviously, because cubic. Uh, so the cubic is divisible by the quadratic. Okay, so what, what is that supposed to mean? It means that polynomial-wise, we can write it like this. This quadratic times a linear something, I don't know, maybe m, is going to equal to the cubic. Let's go ahead and distribute x cubed. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify the right-hand side as x cubed minus m plus 1x squared plus m minus 4x minus 4m. Now set them equal to each other. These are polynomials. The coefficient of x squared must be 0. The coefficient of x must be negative 5. The constant term must equal k. From here we get m equals negative 1, m equals negative 1, and k equals 4m, which means k equals negative 4. What is k though? k is what I'm looking for. k equals negative 4 implies x cubed minus 5x equals negative 4 as the answer. And this doesn't bring us to the end of the video because I still have to show you the graph. And here's the graph of these two functions. Remember, I was telling you for a particular k value, I want these um, cubic to be divisible by the quadratic or I want them to share roots and they actually do share roots and you can say you can kind of see the intersection point of the quadratic and the cubic but the cubic makes a nice turn so that they can kind of share that root and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye